It was never promised that life here on earth would be easy, but let's go on this journey together. You're listening to From Hurt to Hope. Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I am so excited you are here. Before I even start digging into today's message, I just feel like I need to be honest with you and say, this is only the second time that I have shared this part of my story. This is only the second time that I've talked about the hurt that I have experienced in my physical life, in my health journey. It's hard to be vulnerable, But I also know that strength can come from that. And I feel like this is just something um, that I've struggled with for a really long time in my life. And I can see it being part of my life for the rest of my life. So I want to talk to you guys about this. Um, And this is my journey, my journey of my health, my journey of my weight, my journey of my body image, and how that has shaped me into the person that I am today. So I grew up with a pretty normal childhood. Uh, I was active. I was always outdoors. I know we went for bike rides all the time as kids. Um, We went fishing. We did camping. We did a lot of outside activities. Um, I also was playing outside with the neighborhood kids all day long, all summer long. Uh, We we played sports. I was involved in t-ball. I did some indoor soccer at a young age. My sister was a volleyball player. So I wanted to be a volleyball player and did that for a little while. Very active childhood. Not that um, not that we didn't have our occasional movie nights, but our life consisted of just being on the go and really being outside. There wasn't a lot of junk food in our home growing up. Not that I can remember. I mean, occasionally, I think when my mom would go to the grocery store, some cookies would be bought and there'd be birthday cake at our parties, but it wasn't like there was always something sweet sitting out on the counter. I think that was probably a good thing because um, I don't have any bad childhood memories of ever binging on food or overindulging at a young age or hiding food or anything like that. But it was just, everything just seemed to be in moderation. It wasn't, there wasn't too much um, junk food, but there wasn't too much healthy food. I was a pretty decent eater as a kid. Uh, My parents always made dinner. We very rarely ate out. I think we would eat out maybe once a week or so. We'd have a family pizza night and that seemed to be um, just once a week. Uh, Very rare do I remember going out to restaurants and, um, getting a lot of fast food. Now that would change later um, as I grew up more, but definitely in my early childhood, we ate at home most nights. Now I do remember um, probably later in my elementary years, my mom did go on a weight loss journey. So my mom, I think has her own story with her weight and she struggled on and off with that. And she decided that she was going to take control of her life and she lost over 60 pounds. I remember hearing her talk about about how she get up early and go walk at the local rec center and she just changed the way she ate and she did amazing. She worked really hard at it, um, had a lot of discipline and lost, lost quite a bit of weight and she's been able to keep it off for years. I also remember my dad going on the Atkins diet, um, at one point when we were younger and I just remember him eating a lot of meat and cutting out the carbs and our house always smelled like bacon. Well, come to find out you got to be careful about what type of meat you eat because he ate a lot of red meat. And then obviously that doesn't, it's not good for your cholesterol, but I just remember him being really funny about us having bread in the house and, um, you know, the crackers and the chips and everything. Um, my dad to this day, he does not eat much pasta. He is not a bread fan at all. Um, and I think that, um, seeing my parents both take control of their lives was very helpful. It was, it was very beneficial to see my parents care and to take action. When my parents started their health journeys, obviously that would trickle into the home some, so they would obviously not have as much, um, binge worthy food in the house. They would make healthier choices when they go to the grocery store and whatnot. So I do think that we observe that as girls in the house, but it was never pushed upon us um, too much. I do know my dad, he carried a lot more fear with um, me and my sisters and how much we ate and how much we weighed and how much we gained because he had a pretty rough childhood um, with his family. There has always been obesity in the family. There's always been overweight complications. I think he 
worried that we'd be picked on by people because he um, grew up watching um, his sisters get picked on for their weight and his mom and different things like that. So I think that he's all, he always had that concern for us that, you know, he never wanted us to experience that, that hurt that could come along with living an unhealthy over overweight um, life. So he was um, a little bit more opinionated and a little bit more vocal on it. If he'd say, if, if we would eat too much, he would, he would bring it up in conversation about how, you know, he, he didn't want us to experience the same hurt as they did. So sometimes those comments would suck because you you don't want to hear that. You just want to live your life and enjoy the cookies. And then you think, oh, well, no, nothing will ever get that out of hand. But I can see where he's coming from on that. Now that I'm a parent, you want what's the best for your child. You want them to be healthy and you want them to live the the longest, most fulfilled, healthy lifestyle. So I definitely see where he was coming from on that. We didn't eat a lot of fried food for the most part. It was just your basic hamburger helper spaghetti kind of evenings in our house. So our family meals at dinner time really did consist of just your average staples. I mean, they probably were loaded with car- carbs and sodium, but at the same time, we weren't eating salads every meal either. So, I mean, we were just pretty much probably your average American family. Then I hit puberty and this is when things really started to change in my life and in my body. I think um, a lot of my weight struggles is associated with my hormones. And once I started puberty, I started gaining weight. I really think my my body changed and I started just gaining more fat in my body. And it was harder because I was gaining weight at that stage where you're already awkward, where you are already um, trying to fit in with the other kids and then your body's changing and you're growing up and parts are developing and you just, you just look awkward and you feel awkward. And I remember at that time I started becoming very clumsy. I was always falling. I was always twisting my ankles. And I think my body was just growing at this like unproportional rate of speed and it was just changing and I wasn't familiar with my own body and I wasn't able to coordinate it very well. I always would wear my sister's clothes, which she gets super annoyed with. If you guys grew up with a sibling where you would take their clothes. Yeah, she would get really annoyed. I was just in this awkward stage where most of the girls my age were still shopping in like the girls section and I was moving into like the junior section. So some of the clothes were obviously like lower cut shirts and shorter shorts. And here I was like, I look too young to be in them, but my body was changing so fast. I also remember um, my pant sizes needing to be bigger, you know, to be able to be pulled up because I had a serious butt crack problem for a really long time in my life where my pants wouldn't be up high enough and my pants were always either falling down or I couldn't keep them up. And I mean, it was seriously a problem. And my dad used to drive him so crazy that he ended up buying me a belt and I was told I needed to wear it, especially when I was outside of the house. But I had a serious pant problem. I struggled with pants because I needed them big enough to come around my waist and my hips, but then they would be too long. And this was before the day when they had um, the short version and the long version and the regular length and all of that. And like inseam wasn't even a thing talked about back in the day. So my mom would buy me different pants and then we would take them out to the local mending lady and she would hem off like four inches at a time. And I get my pants back because for a long season in my life, my pants would fit right around the waist, but then the bottoms of them would drag across the ground and they would get completely tore up and have holes in the bottom of my jeans. So even during this season of my life, I don't remember ever having like binges where I would just crave food or I would just need something or I would sneak food. It was more or less like the food was in the house and I find myself eating it. Um, I, I think it was just a change in probably my activity as well. I wasn't as active, you know, you're sitting in a classroom longer and I wasn't, you know, doing a lot of sports at this time in my life in middle school. I don't remember though, ever binging or just craving food or feeling like I had to eat something. Um, so I really do think it was a lot of hormones. My parents were still just making healthy choices in the house and I was still gaining weight during that time of my life. Going into high school, things were definitely getting harder because I was still awkwardly larger than a lot of the people that 
that were in my class. And my freshman year, I just remember not feeling super secure in my body, um, still trying to adjust into who I was. And that spring I went out and I did the softball season and the conditioning was terribly hard, terribly hard. I was one of the bigger girls on the team and I just had a hard time doing all of that running, but I got in shape that spring and I told myself I was not going to lose that growth that I was able to do. I didn't want to fall back out of shape. So after the softball season was over my freshman year, I kept running. I kept doing it. I grew up watching my sister do volleyball and basketball and cross country. So she was always doing some type of running. And I finally got myself in shape enough to be able to run and be able to go distance. So that summer between my freshman and sophomore year, I picked up running and I would leave my house and I would go up to the main street in our town and I would run. And we would always say run to the Methodist church and back because the Methodist church from our house was one mile. And so I remember the first time that I was able to run to the church and back back to our house and do two complete miles without stopping. It was, it was a day. I remember how I got home and it was the middle of the summer and I remember how I felt and I was so proud of myself. I couldn't believe that I had ran two miles without stopping. Later in the fall of that year, I turned 16. I started driving. I got my first car. I got my first job and I would go to work at the little hardware store in town and I would be able to buy anything I'd want because I was making my own money. So I get my paycheck and I go and be able to drive through the Taco Bell, you know, drive through or I get an energy drink. I was drinking energy drinks at that time is when they first were starting to come out and they were all the rage. I would um, go over to the family dollar next to the hardware store and I would get a uh, energy drink and a bag of sour patches and I would eat that. And so with this newfound um, freedom and independence as being a 16 year old and earning all my money, I was able to keep going with that, um, you know, balance of sometimes exercising, sometimes eating healthy, sometimes eating terrible um, for several months. And then the spring of my self year when I was still 16 years old, I met this guy. His name is Brad and he's still in my life today. I'm actually married to him, but Brad and I probably couldn't have been any more opposite, um, especially in our physical health life um, when we first met. So Brad was stick skinny. I'm talking like teeny tiny, not an ounce of fat on him. He did not exercise. He was not active at all as far as doing any sports. He had a deep fryer in his home and his signature meal was French fries and chicken nuggets. And I had a car and I had a job and we found ourselves at Taco Bell almost every single day. We went to the movies and we'd eat the candy and I found myself blowing off running and exercising because obviously I went to work and I went to school and I wanted to hang out with friends and Brad didn't understand the whole running because obviously um, he didn't realize that's what I had to do to keep in shape, but he didn't get it. So he was just like, no, don't run. Like, don't go work out. Come, come hang out with me. You know, that's taking up too much time. And it was really me just losing that balance for in my freshman year. I had given up drinking pop. Pepsi was like always a big crutch for me. I drink pop all the time. And then I met Brad and he was like a popaholic. Like he can drink a case of pop in like two days. It was terribly disgusting. Um, but I wanted to be able to do that too. So I started drinking pop and I started eating all the deep fried food that he ate. And it was just this combination of us just being two different people, but still I was trying to live the lifestyle that he was able to live and he didn't gain an ounce of that, but I started gaining it. I definitely, my weight started creeping up there going into my junior, um, especially my senior year, my weight started creeping up. I didn't continue playing softball. I wasn't doing any sports. My senior year, I actually was working two jobs on top of going to school. And I just found myself having more of the reason to go through the drive through because I get out of school and I get something to eat. Then I go to my job and then I come home and I do homework and my parents would have, um, at this time they 
started eating out more or the meals weren't being made at home every night. So I wouldn't like what they made, but since I made my own money, I was able to go and buy my own food. It was just a cycle. And I just started gaining more and more weight. I definitely knew I was gaining weight um, in my senior year. You know, I, my prom dress ended up having to be bigger than what the prom dress the year before was. And my clothes weren't fitting right. And my pants started, you know, being very uncomfortable and giving me the muffin top. So I definitely know that I was gaining the weight back. I remember one of the very first anxiety attacks that I had was during my high school um, years when I I wanted to take control of, of my life and I was still trying to balance that relationship. So I decided that I was going to get up early and go to our local rec center. They opened at like 530 in the morning and I, I was 18 and I went and bought some like hydroxy cut um, diet pills at Walmart. And I remember taking those diet pills and getting up and going to the rec center at 5.30 in the morning. And then the plan was that I would just do my workouts before so that it wouldn't interfere with my life. I could still keep my job after school. I still have my relationships and my free time and I go to school and I would just get up earlier and I'd go to the, I'd go to the rec and work out. I remember I took that diet pill and I went and I was, um, it was a few days in, I was, I would go and I'd exercise and then I go down to the locker room and I get ready for school. And I would go to school from the, from the rec center each morning. And one morning I just was not okay. I took that diet pill and I did my workout and I got down to that locker room and I had a panic attack. I was crying. I was shaking. It would have been a combination of things, probably not having any food in my system and working out on an empty stomach and, you know, just the, um, all the ingredients and just all these things working together with my body and just beating myself up because the scale wasn't moving. And I had a complete panic attack. I remember driving to school and just not even knowing if I was going to be able to go in that morning and looking like a hot mess because I had just cried my eyes out. I finally mustered up the courage and went in, but that was probably the worst feeling that I had ever had because heart was racing. I was short of breath and it was one of the scariest times. So after that happened and it scared me to death, I was scared to, you know, keep getting up and going to the gym every morning. So that season ended and I didn't work out before I went to school anymore after that day. So I finished high school this way. I finished high school with this pretty much unhealthy lifestyle, completely just taking over that freedom of buying whatever I wanted to and um, controlling my own um, food my, and what went into my body. But I wasn't, I wasn't making the best decisions. And Brad and I, we moved out on our own um, right after I graduated high school. And we were poor. We didn't have a lot of extra money. And I remember most nights, in our very first apartment, we would order the $5 medium pizza from Domino's and we would go pick it up because we knew that delivery costed even more. And we ate Domino's pizza several nights um, a week. And now Brad is by far the pickiest eater that I know. He is, this isn't his fault by any means, but he's definitely picky and he definitely will persuade me in eating more fast food than anything. There was a few times um, when we were just out on our own where I would want to make spaghetti or cook at home or try a recipe that my parents used when I was growing up and eat in and I'd make it and he wouldn't eat it. And then he'd still go get fast food. And uh, it, it sucked because then it got to the point where I'm like, why would I even cook at home? Because he's not going to eat it anyways. And then I was just cooking for one. And then I didn't even know proper nutrition. And I thought things were healthy that weren't healthy. During this time, I did try to lose weight. I knew my weight was getting out of hand. I was um, over 200 pounds at this time, uh, probably my first year, year and a half out of high school. I knew my weight was getting out of control. I could just feel it in my body. I wasn't feeling as good. You know, the scale wasn't looking good. The clothes weren't looking good. Nothing was fitting. I was a college student and I was working and I thought I knew what I needed to do. I thought I needed to diet exercise, but I didn't even know what a healthy diet consisted of. To this day, I cannot believe that I thought goldfish crackers were healthy for me. So I just sit and eat goldfish crackers all the time because I was like, oh, goldfish crackers and chicken salad. Like that would be a good healthy thing. And I signed up and I got a gym membership. And I remember 
having to leave the house and go to the gym. And Brad was not into going to the gym with me at all. So I would be leaving the house and we could have been watching a movie and we could have just been hanging out or I would have homework or I'd need to get up early. And I got this gym membership to a 24 hour gym and it only lasted so long. And then I quit going to that. And it got hard because my body was completely out of shape. And I remember being frustrated that I used to be able to run two miles nonstop. And I used to be so much more active. My body just had so much more energy, but now it was just, I was winded and I was exhausted and I couldn't, I couldn't move my body the way that I used to be. So it was, it was pretty discouraging. Um, I definitely didn't have that support of Brad saying, yeah, let's go to the gym together, but he never told me not to go. And, um, I think that was a great thing is that he never, he's never not encouraged me to better myself and to be healthier, but at the same time, there was never that accountability of, okay, let's start eating healthier together. So I got very discouraged because I was trying to lose weight. I was trying to do what I thought would work, but I was still gaining weight. So then at that point, I think I just gave up. I thought to myself, why even try so hard? Why try so hard? Go to the gym, leave my boyfriend, um, try to cook meals for one person. And I gave up and I really do think I started spiraling into food being my comfort. And I found myself at home a lot of nights because Brad, um, at this time in our life would have started, um, his construction job where he traveled and it just got harder because I'd sit at home by myself and I was so confused in life because I didn't know if I wanted to continue going to college or if I wanted to just go and get a full-time job. I didn't know who I was. And I definitely think I found myself just eating out of habit, eating because I was bored and eating because I was emotional. I do feel bad. Um, I've always felt a sense of guilt because I was really gaining the weight then in this season of our lives. And I feel bad because, you know, Brad never said anything to make me, um, you know, question what I was doing. He still loved me. He gave me support. And there's just no way I think back that he could be proud of walking around with me and saying, yeah, that's my girlfriend because here I was getting really, really heavy. And looking back on it, he still stood by my side and he still loved me, even though he could have very well been embarrassed of me. And I just look back at that like, wow, he loved me even during this heaviest, darkest, unhealthiest season of my life. And I think that says a lot. I decided that I was going to start taking taking um, some more drastic measures, probably around the time that we um, moved into our second apartment together and got engaged. I remember that I signed up for this HCG diet. I am not a health professional, so I can't go into very many details on that, but it was something where I had to give myself hormone injections and I did that every single day and they guaranteed that you would lose a pound every day. And I remember I had to keep these injections in my refrigerator and they came preloaded and I would have to poke myself with a needle and inject my stomach every day. And I, I'm a person who's really, um, not anymore, but I definitely was needle terrified. I hated to get blood work done. I hated needles and I was sitting there at this, um, desperate of a place where I was giving myself injections every day. But lo and behold, this diet also costed several hundred dollars. I think even to get started on it, I had to pay like $500 to get started and do the initial evaluation and to get my first um, several months of the injections. And I was a broke college student working and I couldn't keep up with it. But by golly, I did lose a pound a day. At this time, I wanted to lose about a hundred pounds. So I had printed out a chart that had um, 100, to Z, uh, 100 to one listed on it. And every day I would get up and I would cross off a box. And once I wasn't able to afford to keep going with this, I gained the weight back. Um, I definitely gained the weight back. And I would go to the next thing and I thought, well, maybe I need to go to my doctor's office and I need to start taking a diet pill. So I went and I took diet pills and the, the specific diet pill that my doctor would prescribe me, I was only able to be on for three months and then you had to take like six months off. Well, I do pretty well during the three months and then I would 
I would gain it all back during the six months that I wasn't able to be on any pills. I also kept wanting it to be easy. I wanted it to be as easy as it was for me back when I was a sophomore in high school. I was frustrated. like I could not move my body and I was exhausted. And I just did not understand proper nutrition at all. And it was just really discouraging for all of this um, to be happening during the season of life when, you know, we were had an upcoming wedding approaching and I was supposed to be um, <laughs> looking beautiful as a bride. So I decided that um, at the time there was this um, really awesome boot camp that I would always see these people working out at our local reservoir. And I decided that I was going to join that. And it was the first time since um, my high school days where I actually stuck with a workout program and I joined this group and the people were so supportive and it was really a boot camp style where we wore backpacks um, full of weights and we did push-ups and we did sit-ups and we would sprint up and down the hill and I remember my mom joined with me for a little while and I got up and I was at that reservoir every morning at 6 a.m. and we worked out till 6 30 and we were down in the dirt and it was it was a great time and I was going five days a week and then one morning and um, it was a fall morning and it was a dark morning. I was running around the reservoir and I hit a pothole and I twisted my ankle and I could just hear all like the different ligaments and things just like ripping as I, you know, went, landed on it and went down on the ground. And my trainer, Tim, who has just been a light in my life, he swooped me up and another lady picked me up and they put me in the car and drove me to the hospital. And I thought for sure my ankle was broken, but I ended up finding out that it was just a really, really bad sprain. And that took me a long time to recover from. So this was just a couple months before our wedding. And I remember thinking, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to dance at our wedding because this injury was so bad. That really knocked the wind out of my cells because for the first time that I was actually getting my body moving again, I committed to a workout program. I was starting to watch what I was eating and I was doing it in a healthier way. I got injured and it knocked me back and I was going to be in this recovery process for quite a while before I was ever going to be able to build the strength up in my ankle um, to get back to that class and to be able to perform the way that I was performing before. So then our wedding approached after um, the injury and I recovered pretty well. It did take a couple months and I, I had some pretty um, intense swelling in my ankle and uh, our wedding, it turned out great and I was able to dance, but by golly, I don't think I love looking back on our wedding pictures. I didn't like the shape of my body. I was overweight the week that I thought I was going to lose um, before for my injury, I didn't end up losing and I probably ended up gaining some weight during those couple months that I was injured and not able to move my body as much. I did go back to um, the boot camp and I would sit on a chair, you know, any weight bearing exercises, I would just sit on a chair and do my best, but that didn't last long because there was only so much stuff that I could participate in um, having a really bummed ankle. So once Brad and I got married, we had even more freedom. You know, we bought our first house and we were making more money. I started a full-time bank job and Brad was working his construction job. So the money was coming in and I think we ate at Outback Steakhouse two or three times a week. And Brad would come home after being gone on a long day and he'd be like, let's go to Outback. And that's what he wanted to eat. And I wasn't fighting with him. And I was like, okay, we're newlyweds. Like, let's just go, go do whatever we want. And I think it was just kind of like a running joke. Like people knew where we would always eat. I, like I said, I had no nutritional um, education. I didn't know what I should be eating, what I shouldn't be eating. And I've always been a sucker for bread. Bread has just always been my weakness and mashed potatoes and cheese and the whole nine yards. And at this time in my life, I was still drinking pop. I sat at home a lot alone because Brad was working and we saved up and we went on this cruise for our honeymoon. And I kid you not, it was a cruise where the food was delicious. And at one point in time, Brad was carrying around two soft serve ice cream cones, one in each hand. And the, you know, the food was just limitless. There's pizza at midnight and, you know, things really were spiraling. I was probably after that trip, I know that I was like tipping the scale right about 290, 300 pounds. And we talked about it. We decided that we wanted to start a family. And I was considering like, should I lose weight before we get pregnant or should I not? But we wanted to start a family so soon 
soon. And I wasn't giving myself enough time to lose the weight. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, why would I put all this work in and lose this weight before I get pregnant? And I was worried about my weight from the very beginning because the first couple months that we started trying, I didn't get pregnant. And I thought, well, it's probably because of my weight. It's probably because of my weight. And I decided to put the idea of being pregnant on the complete back burner. And I thought, I'm not even going to think about this anymore. And in the meantime, I'm going to start getting myself in a little bit of a healthier shape. And then the next thing you know, the next month I'm pregnant and uh, we find out that we're pregnant with twins. And that was quite a surprise. So not only were we having one baby, but we were having two babies. And I remember a story um, from the very beginning of my pregnancy, I was sick and I went to the doctors and I had a sinus infection. And I just went to my family doctor and I was hoping that they would be able to give me an antibiotic. And I went in and I seen my doctor, I seen him for the sinus infection. And when it was time to leave, they gave me a discharge paper. And it was when they very first started doing those printouts of your visit. And they had the diagnosis on there of a sinus infection. They had that I was pregnant on there. And then right underneath that, it was like, and my next diagnosis was morbidly obese. I got out to the car and I looked at that and that paper said I weighed 305 pounds. I was crushed by it. I felt so terrible. My heart was completely broken because I did not go to my doctor for him to talk to me about my weight. I went to the doctor because I had a sinus infection, but they still diagnosed me with this and it just broke my heart. And I remember thinking I'm pregnant now and there's nothing that I can do. I can't change this. I can't lose a lot of weight while I'm pregnant. So I remember thinking to myself, as soon as I have these babies, I'm going to get my life under control. I'm going to lose this weight and I'm going to get healthy. It was really hard for me being pregnant because I was a high risk pregnancy um, and I I was already as sick as sick could be. I, I could not hold anything down. Most days I would get sick five, six times a day throwing up. My doctor that I was seeing for my pregnancy told me nearly every time that I went in that my um, my tests were showing that I was malnourished and I just could not keep any nutrients down. So I did not gain any additional weight during that pregnancy. I ended up losing some weight. Um, I also developed some pretty high blood pressure during that pregnancy. And I feel like that was also associated with my hormones. So I was put on a blood pressure medicine. I was told not to do any strenuous exercise. Um, my doctor wanted me to be eating more. And here I am feeling so bad about myself being morbidly obese, um, but they're wanting me to eat more and they're not wanting me to exercise. And obviously I needed to do whatever it was the healthiest for my babies. So I didn't, I didn't, I just maybe watched portions a little bit more, tried not to do a lot of late night eating, but I also just, just tried to get through every single day with a positive mindset, even though in the back of my head, it was nagging at me that I looked terrible. I was unhealthy. I was overweight and all this stuff was weighing on me. I do remember one time going over to my mom's house. It must've been either on a lunch break or right after I'd gotten off work, I stopped at my mom's house to visit her. And I went in and my mom was talking to a family member on the phone and she was telling them, you know, about the twin pregnancy. She was telling them about how my blood pressure was high, but how I had a great doctor by my side now. And um, I think we were approaching the time that we were going to have the gender party. So, you know, we were like speculating about what the babies would be. So my mom's just having this conversation standing in her kitchen. And I remember the phone being on speakerphone and this family member flat out said, well, you know, if she lost weight, her blood pressure wouldn't be so high. It's probably because she's so overweight. And that just crushed me. I'm pretty sure that I just walked out the back door and cried. And my mom didn't expect that to come out of the person's mouth. So she felt pretty bad. And I was just like, wow, like, obviously this is so obvious. Like people can see this. And, you know, I was blaming myself a lot for having the high risk pregnancy because I didn't take care of my body before I got pregnant. And then that comment just kind of solidified it. Like, wow, what I think about myself, other people are thinking about me as well. So I had a lot of stress going on during the season of life. My self-confidence was pretty low. I was at my highest weight 
um, ever. I had a stressful job in an environment that I did not like at all. I dreaded going every single day, a lot of anxiety. Um, Brad and I were married at this time and there was just a lot of financial strain and stress and we were just navigating newlywed life and there was just a lot of stress. And um, then um, to add a little bit more stress on it, our twins came early. Um, it's a whole nother story for a whole nother day, but our twins were born three months early and I blame that on myself in so many ways. I thought that it was because I didn't take care of my body. I thought that it was because I was under too much stress. I thought I did something wrong. And it took me a really long time to heal from that because I thought that it was my fault was it was my fault that my kids were born so early and that they had such a hard life at the beginning and they were fighting for their lives. So not only were they born early and spent several months living out of the NICU, but I was healing from this trauma and I was so scared and I had all this guilt and blamed myself and the stress. And I was away from home living out of this, um, out of the Ronald McDonald's house and out of the children's hospital. So I started taking care of myself right then and there. My kids were born in August and I'm pretty sure I set up my very first um, doctor's appointments for myself in September. I always had struggled with allergies and sinus issues. So I set up an appointment with an ENT and I went and seen one of them in Akron and I knew I needed to get my weight under control. So I started seeing a dietitian and every chance that I get after visiting with the babies, I would go out and walk around the hospital. I tried to start making healthier choices when I would be in the cafeteria. I started making a plan for my life and just trying to get my life back in control. And I think the biggest thing that contributed to that was just watching my babies completely helpless, struggle so much to fight for their lives. And here I was was, you know, on this other side of this where I had complete control of my life and I was just throwing it away. I was just eating whatever I wanted leading up to the pregnancy and I was letting my emotions take control of me. And now I had these babies that gave me a reason to become healthy. At this time, I had a doctor's visit with um, the nutrition clinic that I was going to. It was also a weight loss center. And I had a doctor's visit because the scale wasn't moving much and they, they thought it was probably because of my body just regulating after hormones, but also because of the stress and the trauma. And there was just so many things going on. And, you know, we tried a couple different meal plans and I, I was over a hundred pounds overweight. I was about 140 pounds over my ideal body weight. And I remember just saying, is there anything else that I can do? Like, what else are my options? I have to get healthy. I have to, I have to change my life. And at that time I started talking to um, one of the surgeons who do weight loss surgery and we had a face to face appointment and he sat down across from me knowing that my babies were really young and he just looked at me and said if you keep living your life like this you're cutting a good 10 to 15 years off your life and I remember just crying right then and there because I knew it was true but having kids now in the picture thinking 10 to 15 years that could be a marriage that could be my grandbabies that could be their graduations and here I am killing myself and I did this to myself and I need to do what I need to do to get this weight off like I mentioned before, I did a lot of things to try to lose the weight in the past. I took diet pills. I did injections on my body. I went on super low calorie diets and I go to the gym and I did all these things and I still was not losing the weight for whatever reason. And, and now I was at this point where I was fighting for my life. I was fighting for my health and I had a reason to fight even more. So it took a little bit of time um, for everything to line up with the surgery. Obviously there was insurance and the planning and I had to make sure I was out far enough from having our babies in order to be able to be cleared to have the surgery. I swear that I went through like an astronaut's um, pre-space launch um, physical exam. I had every single blood work, every single test. I had sleep studies. I had so many things done um, to, to see if I was even healthy enough to have the weight loss surgery. Leading up to my surgery, there was a time when we went to Cedar Point as a family, which is a local amusement park. So it was my dad, my older sister, and my husband and myself. And we went to the amusement park and there was a new ride. And I always grew up riding roller coasters. And so this new ride was open and everybody was going to get on it. And I was excited. We waited in line and it was our time to get in. And it was a ride where the belt came over your head and buckled between your legs. And I remember getting in and sitting down and the 
safety belt was not going to fit me. And I look over and I tell Brad, I said, it's not going to fit. I, I'm too big. I won't buckle. And he's like, yeah, it will. Yeah, it will. I'm like, no, Brad, it will not fit me. Like I am not going to be able to ride this ride. And I'm going to be so embarrassed because I'm going to have to get up and walk off and I'm holding up the ride. I need to get out of my seat right now. And I remember my dad and my sister were sitting in the seats in front of me and we were like, they're kind of turning around, making sure everything was okay. And I'm telling Brad, I'm like, I'm getting up. And my eyes are filling with tears. And he's like, no, just sit there. They'll come over and the ride attendant will help you. And I'm like, no, it won't buckle. Like you don't understand. And the ride attendant comes up and I'm like, I got to get out. I'm not going to fit. And the next thing you know, they come over the announcements and I was just praying and crying and it was just a mess. And I remember they come over the announcements and they said, the ride is down due to mechanical failure. And I thought to myself that moment right there, that that was God and he was saving me from that embarrassment. So not only did I have to get up and walk off the ride, but now everybody was getting off the ride and walking out. I don't know to this day if there really was a a mechanical failure or what happened, but it did save me from that embarrassment. Um, And that was probably one of the most heartbreaking times when I realized that my life was out of control and I did not want my babies to be embarrassed of me. I did not want to be kicked off rides at the amusement park. I wanted to ride those rides with them as they grew up and I wanted to have those memories and I didn't want my weight to keep me from being able to enjoy life with them and to live that long, healthy life as their mom. Um, And then that summer I had the weight loss surgery and I was probably one of the hardest things because I think a lot of my family members were worried because, you know, people run into complications from these types of surgeries and my family members weren't that supportive, but I knew I wanted to take control of my life. And the recovery was by far the hardest recovery from any surgery that I had ever went through. Um, you know, clear liquid diets and no, no nutrients probably for the first week because they're more worried about the incision in your stomach healing and having no energy. And I was told that I wasn't going to be able to be on my own for several weeks after the surgery because of the recovery. But because of some family stress and drama, I was back to taking care of my babies just one week post-op from the surgery. Um, I wasn't able to drive. I remember just sitting on the floor in our house with these babies, which they were probably about 11 months at the time. I remember sitting on the floor and them just crawling up to me and me mixing their formula and feeding them and having diapers right by my side, still trying to recover from the surgery, but not being able to pick them up and move. And so we had everything really on floor level where I could just like crawl over to their blankets and their diapers and their pack and play and be able to play with them on the floor because I wasn't supposed to be lifting anything um, very heavy at all. Things started to get a little easier during that recovery, but one of the things that was, that took a long time to recover from was the guilt. I had people make comments that I took the easy way out and that I, um, you know, I cheated and that I, you know, shouldn't have done that. I couldn't believe that I had surgery. And I carried a lot of the shame for myself because I didn't want to tell a lot of people that I had surgery. I was so embarrassed of myself. I was so embarrassed that I had gotten over 300 pounds. I was so embarrassed that my babies were born early. I was so embarrassed that I completely had lost control of my life. And I was just feeding myself up so much for it. And I remember that there were people who actually made comments that said, you know, you'll gain all your weight back. You're not going to be able to keep it off. Everybody gains their weight back. And it just beat me up and, you know, it placed more self doubt in my mind, but it also gave me a little bit of a fire, but then it also was carrying the shame. And there were just so many emotions that went along with all of this. And just to think that people were rooting for me to fail was just devastating. I really had to to wrap my head around the idea that the surgery was a tool, that it was just a tool that I used to lose the weight and that I was going to have to continue to put the work in. And I think that's something that a lot of people do not um, take into consideration is that the surgery is a tool. It does alter your body. And I'm not saying this is for anybody um, out there at all. Like I said, I'm not a doctor and this is my own personal story and what led me to that decision. But I had used the tools that I had and the resources as I had, I had a significant amount of weight to lose to get back into the range of even being 
borderline healthy. I do say that that surgery saved my life. It gave me my life again and it gave me a chance. This option is not for everybody. So not only did the surgery save my life, but it gave me um, the outlook that, wow, I can actually do this. And every day is going to be hard, but I can still do this. So I kept the weight off for three years and then I got pregnant with our third baby, Houston. And with him, I gained 40 pounds. So that was hard for me to see the scale start going back up, but I understood more nutrition at this point. Um, Probably not to the best, best knowledge, but I understood nutrition more. So I gained weight with him and I still look at myself today and I still have about 20 pounds that I need to get off. And that baby is going to be three this year. Um, But my health and my pregnancy with him was probably prime. It was, I had really great levels and I was doing really well. I tried not to overindulge during that pregnancy, but I also gave myself a lot of grace and he was born a very, very healthy baby. And I think that was all part of like a healing process from my first trauma, traumatic pregnancy. So after he was born, I got right back to working out. I was still trying to learn nutrition. And then the gym owner, Tim, came back and he started up the fit classes again. And I was so excited because I had swore that if he ever came back to the area after moving out of state, that I would join his classes again. So I joined fit and I started going to the gym and I would work out every single morning. I got super disciplined with it. I was making that investment. But I was still struggling with the shape of my body. I my body shape is different. I I have a booty. I'm bigger. I'm I'm bottom big. And I was upset because I go to the gym and I'd work out with these people who are stick skinny and they get these abs. And my body shape, I'm just full of muscle. And I think I'm built a lot like my dad. We're pretty husky. We're short and solid. And I remember a conversation that I had with Tim and then another girl at the gym and they were just telling me about how this is my shape and this is my body and I need to embrace it and about how this is how God made me this way. And for the first time in my life, I thought to myself, well, okay, like this is my body shape and this is how I am. So I'm going to just start embracing the muscle and I'm going to start embracing this more of a curvy figure, but I can be healthy while I do it. And then I realized I had to start examining my life, looking at my eating habits even more because I had lost the weight. I was going to the gym. I still had a goal that I wanted to reach, but I was still going to food for emotional comfort, not in large quantities like I was before where I'd eat an entire row of Oreos, but I was eating, you know, a couple of Oreos a night, just two a night. And I'm like, wow, that adds up to be 14 Oreos a week. And then the keto diet was really kicking off at this time. And it's just all of these things, um, you know, I'm like, okay, well, what should I do? Be, be doing what lifestyle should I be living? And my faith was a accelerating and that relationship with God was accelerating. And I knew the Bible talked about every area in our life. So obviously it was going to talk about our bodies as well. I started viewing my body as a temple. So a verse I want to share with you is 1 Corinthians 3, chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. It says, don't you know that you yourselves are a temple, that God's spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him for God's temple is sacred and you are that temple. And realizing that I needed to embrace my body, but also that my body holds the Holy Spirit in it because I've accepted Christ as my savior. I also realized that I needed to start taking care of my body for other reasons, not that it was just for a physical um, appearance and how I felt in clothes, but I needed to be taking care of my body because this is the body that God gave me. And I needed to be a good steward and a good manager of the life he gave me. And I did that for many years, but recently I have been working working out really well. I'm still on this journey. I still have about another 20 pounds to lose. COVID was not very friendly to me. I've always had scale anxiety. So I decided back at the beginning of this year, 2020, that I wasn't going to weigh myself throughout the year. I said, no, Satan, not today. And Satan is a scale and I wasn't going to use it. And obviously that crept up and um, kind of bit me a little bit because I gained more weight than I thought I was going to, especially wearing comfy pants all the time. It's not the truest um, measure of how much weight you are gaining. I also found myself going to food for more comfort. Um, my luxury every day was going to get an iced coffee. I'd go through Dunkin' Donuts or McDonald's or the local coffee shop and I'd get an iced coffee. Every morning I'd load the kids up or when I was dropping them off at school, we'd go get an iced coffee and the boys got used to getting donuts and I would go get my iced coffees. And I was experiencing a lot of physical um 
issues because of this, but I would get coffees and I get headaches. And it took me a little while to understand that correlation that these coffees had way too much sugar in them and my body couldn't process it. And it was giving me these headaches. So I'd start getting my coffees with less sugar. And then instead of getting a muffin every morning, because that was my reward for surviving mo- motherhood and my comfort, I get a, I get a muffin like once a week, but obviously that still crept up on me. I was turning to food to fill a hole in my heart and um, an area of my life that I thought like, okay, if I eat a bowl of ice cream every night, I'm going to be happy. But then I was actually miserable and I go to bed with a stomach ache or I think, ooh, like I'm going to go out and get that iced coffee because it's going to take the stress out of my day. Well, no, it didn't take the stress out of my day. And then it ended up giving me a headache. So I was pretty much hit in the face with this book last week when I was um, at a local store. My eyes were wide open when I seen the title of the book. It was 40 Days um, Sugar Fast. And I thought, well, that's exactly what I need to do because sugar has really always been my crutch. It's always been that reward. It's been that thing. And since I am trying to fill that place in me with sugar, I thought, why not? Why not just do a sugar fast? So that's where I am right now. I'm um, almost a week into it. And it's been hard because I am not giving... Um, myself any um, permission to drink any coffee. I have not had any sweets. The only sweets that I have had, um, I guess if you would say the sugars that I have had in the last week are um, natural fruit sugars. So watermelon, strawberries, um, blueberries, and things like that. But I'm not having any other sugar and I am committing to it because I want to grow closer to God and I don't want food to try to fill that area. And it's always been my crutch. It's always been the weapon. It's always been the thing that I thought would make me happy happy, but it doesn't. Everybody has some type of addiction. You know, some people overspend and some people shop and some people gamble and some people, you know, have drugs and alcohol. And for me, it's been food. Food has been my addiction. Food has been the thing that I thought would fill me and I could be full. I could be physically full. My stomach could be full, but my heart would still be empty because I thought the food was going to fill this. But the only thing that would really fill that is Jesus and just having that relationship with him. I did, I do have some cravings right now, but I'm holding myself accountable to this. And I tell you this, you guys, because I want you to know that I still struggle every single day. Like I said, COVID wasn't friendly to me, even though I worked out every single day during it, I gained more weight than I have ever expected that I was going to. And then in the back of my mind, I have that, oh, I'm going to gain all this weight back. And, um, you know, my self-esteem is down and I feel like people are going to be proved right that, you know, I was going to gain all my weight back. And I'm six years out from my surgery at this point, and I'm still doing pretty good. I'm not exactly where I want to be, obviously, because of recent weight gain. I am doing this and I am human and I am flawed and I am made of flesh and I have to give myself some grace to realize that I am where I am. I don't need to be filling my life with sugar. I need to be filling my life with the spirit. I am going to have a lifelong journey with my body and with food and with the struggle that I've faced with it. I'm sure my weight is going to fluctuate, especially as my life changes and I approach the next decade of my life. And I'm going to be living in this body, in this temple um, until my spirit leaves this earth and goes to heaven. And I need to take care of it to the best I can. But I've also realized that I need to surround myself with really great people and, you know, like I said, brag and eat whatever he wants, but he has become so much more supportive. And I'm trying to find that way to be a healthy parent to my kids where, you know, we're not letting them eat a ton of junk food. And I'm trying to help them learn the education behind nutrients now, but also not to make them um, be obsessive about it. I've surrounded myself with good friends that are on the similar journeys with me. And I try to keep the um, <laughs> the doubters and the haters at, at arm's length because that's not going to help me in the least. And then I have really good people um, and trainers and friends and gym family that have come into my life and have just completely changed it and given me that perspective of just embracing who I am and giving myself grace, but they're always there to encourage. I am on this journey and I will be on it for the rest of my life, but this is who I am. This is one of the biggest areas that I have hurt in my entire life. And I've been able to find hope because I know that every day I'm still trying, that I'm not giving up, that I'm not surrendering, that I have become more aware of when my body starts getting out of control that I'm focusing now. I'm instead of filling my body with sugar, I'm going to fill my body with the spirit and I'm giving myself that grace. But this is one of the areas that has caused me the most hurt. It's caused the most social anxiety. It's called the most self doubt. And I beat myself up in this area more than anything. And it's one of the most vulnerable areas that I could ever tell you guys about here on this show. And so this is my story of from hurt to hope in my physical life. 
life and what it's looked like my entire life. Thank you for checking out this episode. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure that you subscribe to the From Hurt to Hope podcast so you do not miss any upcoming episodes. 